Good evening everybody, Fraser here. I've been wondering what on earth I'm going to call my blog. Um, but I guess it doesn't really matter at the moment because I'm just uh, having you join me for a quick evening walk. And the aim this evening is to try my luck and see whether this Marsh Harrier that uh, flew over on the 30th and then on the 31st in the morning is going to put in another appearance. So John and I had a good look this morning, well over an hour without success. And uh, just to uh, show you what the deal is, I'm walking down the car park field. Just swing the camera around, would this let me do that? It doesn't look like it's going. Okay, still lots to learn about this stuff. But um, looking behind me, see the sun's going down to the west. I think that's the way the sun sets, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, we had a little good walk around this morning. And uh, uh, what did we get anything new? I got uh, a little eagle on my year list bringing me up to 78 out of the 82 species seen so far. And um, so, a little half hour look around, maybe 20 minutes even, see if the uh, bird's gonna fly in. If not, straight back home for some dinner and uh, see what happens. I'll do a pan around in a couple of moments. Here we are, looking uh, west across the uh, top southern end of the landfill but across Lavels Lake to the west and panning across the landfill the other side of the rise in the landfill there is uh, Lee Farm out of view over the brow the wood directly in front of us now is uh, lodge wood you can hopefully make out the sheep on the brow further over to the hills in the back so the large tree just sort of uh, center right is the old oak tree we used to get little owls in. But the hills at the back, I'll see if I can uh, zoom this up slightly. The hills at the back there, the two hills is where I come looking for, I scan right over to the horizon there. That's approximately uh, three to four miles. Never really looked at it probably on the map, but it's in that ballpark. The golden plover can often come in in the dusk from right to left and roost somewhere around some uh, fields in that area. Um, over there is uh, the Lee Farm buildings, the green barn, and to the, my immediate right, the reeds there mark where the uh, balancing pond is. So, um, yeah, this is what I do a lot of. I don't know if this will pick up on the uh, image there, but you might just be able to make out some the many jackdaws that are heading to roost. And it was about this light on the 30th of December that I picked up the Marsh Harrier. And uh, boy, was I surprised and pleased to see that. It's been a full day today. Well, not a full day, but basically a full morning from first light. Had a quick look for uh, Woodcock without success. I was about 10 minutes late, really. And then went out to exactly this spot. Spent uh, quite a few minutes with John looking across, hoping the Marsh Harrier might fly area of this airspace here. I picked it up the following morning exactly over Lodgewood over there, moving left, and uh, then headed back north. North's pretty much there. So um, this is the bottom of the car park field where we look and see numerous things. I've seen various raptors, osprey, several marsh harriers, and um, lots of golden plover over the years. Just for a second, I thought I heard a missile thrush, which I need for the year. Hmm. So uh, I absolutely need to get um, a little tripod, uh, something to mount my um, phone on so I can just get on with this talking and panning around, showing people a few things. Um, <laughs> I've been listening to myself, which is uh, still making me laugh as I'm in these early stages, but I have this tendency to go, so. Uh, anyone being interviewed on television says so a lot these days and I think it's just about how you buy yourself a few seconds to answer a question. Uh, I don't have the luxury of someone asking me a question. I wasn't planning to be interviewed um, but uh, there it is. It's whatever is going on behind me is not a lot uh, but for what it's worth there's been what you would expect going over. Plenty of jackdaw, red wing, a few starlings. Right now there's a robin off to my right calling away sun has set and there won't be an awful lot more to um, find 
other than a few late birds going into roost. I'm just going to check whether or not this is Karen or not. Might be an egret, bear with me. Yes, well it was an egret and I believe it was a little egret and um, real world birding stuff is they never, well not they never, but a lot of the time they do not turn and face sideways or face you so that you can see beaks. Often you want something else to give you a sense of scale and it just doesn't happen. <laughs> it's nothing personal, but birds are awkward to see sometimes. But that's it. That is an amazing fact and a truth you cannot escape. Bird identification is all about taking a few seconds and uh, barely that sometimes just to nail it. And um, every single day probably I go out, there's stuff I do not nail. Um, but that's the, that's the endeavor, trying to identify stuff with as limited views as is possible. And um, like some of my little boys, uh, YouTubers, uh, that he watches in gaming. I'm trying to work out my hi guys, what is up, and all that kind of way of greeting my um, audience and ways of signing off too. And I don't want to be cheesy or rubbish, so I'll come up with, I've come up with nothing so far, but I'll work on it. We'll find out something, and I'm going to be, I'm looking around for a bit of music that would perhaps denote a way of uh, saying hi and uh, starting my uh, sessions off. Still early days, looking forward to sharing more with you. I'll get this bone attached to my telescope, start showing people proper stuff. Take care. Bye-bye. So I'm going to keep my voice down because we're very close to some birds here looking out of Bit and Hyde. The flooding is still yet to recede properly. But the excellent news at the end of the bud there, and uh, like I said earlier, I promised to get my um, phone attached to this telescope of mine. Um, there is a shell duck which has been around all day, now sleeping at the end if you can make out the... Uh, swan um, but off to the left sort of clump of trees there is um i've just found a bitten and that's something to be incredibly excited about because one i love bittens and two they're awesome and three as far as we were aware we only had one uh, excuse me two over at white swan which i may have talked about already but uh, having just located one on levels that means we've got three wintering in the area now which is super stunning and only just fantastic. Sweet dreams. Peace out and goodbye. <laughs> so I am really pleased. I was um, at the bottom of the car park, as I was just saying, and I just, there you go, there's another. I was um, thinking, yeah, I should go and have a look for the shell duck. It's been there all day. Put it on my 2020 list. I right, take two minutes past a lovely gentleman called Peter with his dog, a um, bird watcher with the dog. There are such things, and um, I saw another little eagle go over. Then got to the hide, saw the shell duck, and that puts me on 79 out of the 82 species seen so far. The oh, just a well. Let's, let's just do a quick pan of everything out there. I was. I suppose um, hoping there might be a uh, uh, pintail that had dropped in or, or something else. Uh, wasn't, but then panning and finding this bitten sitting at the top of the reeds like they do so often on a uh, late dusk evening. Absolutely fantastic, brilliant way of finishing the evening off. Um, just past my friend Roger's car. He's obviously up at the other lake where we get um, bittens and um, he hasn't reported them yet, but doesn't matter. It's just great news. I, I love my birding. I love my patch and I love to be out as often as I can. As you'll see over the coming months and hopefully years that I want to do this, um, there's often, not always, but very often, something new to see. This morning, I was out with my good friend, John, as I said a little earlier, and we were blessed to see a peregrine having a field day, doing something I've not ever seen before. I'm 53. I've seen quite a lot of peregrines here at my patch since 2003 when they first started appearing. And this peregrine was just having a real issue for a few minutes. I don't know what its story was really, but it was basically taking exception to any red kites that came over this particular part of the landfill. And for a good two or so minutes, 
it was pretty much attacking but not hitting the peregrines. I mean, right up to the, the last kind of inch or so, it was coming out. Not full pace. There was something quite interesting about the way it flew. Is it was fluttering its wings rather than a full stoop. So it knew what it was doing. It knew it was just basically being a nuisance to the red kites. What it was doing it for, I have no idea. But I think it was just making a kind of territorial statement that this is his hunting ground. And um, there it was. It was a really pale bird on the back and on the upper tail area. And it was almost pure white on the upper breast. So very, very distinctive bird. But even after... Uh, what am I now? 39 years of birding. Um, this is the first time I've ever seen a peregrine doing this. And in the 17 years, peregrines have been sighted over Dinton. Uh, this is the first time I've seen it doing that as well. So, don't know what was going on, but it was just ace. And I love sharing anything just to sort of put it out there that, that it, patch birding is brilliant. Twitchers and other people that like to sort of go around. I'm not opposed to going to the coast or anywhere other, any other part of the world for that matter it's great going birding anywhere but patch birding is a very special area of birding that, that anyone can enjoy because if you live near any piece of rough ground gravel pits are fantastic because water always attracts more species variety of species you can see different things by just going to the same place on a regular basis um, so yeah there it is nearly home again I think I'm going to enjoy just sharing these kind of um, post-birding moments with you in the car and um, hope you guys can um, get something out of it too and do more patch birding. It's so rewarding and um, it's, it's, it's kind of got a lower carbon footprint as well if we're honest. If you can cycle or even walk to your local patch if you're lucky enough to near to live so close to a, an area you can call your patch then do that. But my advice, get out there as often as possible you'll learn things you'll see things you've never seen before it doesn't matter how long you've been birding there's always something new to experience take care safe journeys great birding bye bye